Hi, this is Denise Matthew and Happy New Year. If you're waiting for the Human Design New Year, Happy New Year to come. Today I'm going to give a general overview of the things that look important for 2022 and some of the energy that we can expect to color our world and kind of give us opportunities to work with the energy and, and to also really get a heads up for what exactly 22 can show us as we move through. And because I'm doing sort of a longer video with a lot more detail and information, I really did want to change it up a little bit so that everybody can use it as much as possible to follow along with your own body graph. I'll try and add as many visuals as I can, but I also want to have the ability for you to look at your body graph, see if there's a particular way that you connect with one of the transits and understand what that means for you. Because the only way you'll understand is when you're actually feeling the energy work through you. And because we know that there's a lot of movement with the earth and the sun throughout the whole year, I'm not really going to talk about those energies because it would be hours and hours of a video and I don't think anybody wants to sit through that. So we're going to focus on the bigger moving planets. We're going to focus on the nodes of the moon to give us a really nice overview of some potentials that we can expect for 2022. So I really want to talk about the nodes and the nodal changes that we're going to be having as the year progresses and then kind of add in the planets so we can build an image or almost a story of what we're going to be working with as we go through. But before we get into what we can expect going forward, I just really want to quickly go over a few themes that we've dealt with sort of in the last little while and how probably January 1st or even January 22nd may not necessarily feel like a new year at all because we do have a few planets that are retrograde that really speaks to introspection, reevaluation, and reviews of all kinds, which actually might feel like a prevalent energy right now. So with that said, I want to welcome everybody here and I hope you can get the information that will serve you for the year. And one last thing, I'm going to have time stamps, a lot of time stamps. So if you want to just kind of go forward, you don't want to hear about 2021 or sort of the energy that we're dealing with right now when I'm putting the video out, if you're watching it later on, then I will have time stamps. So you can just go where you want to go and get what you need to get. And I do hope this will be a resource that you can use as the year goes through. And with that said, let's get into the transit. One of the biggest themes that we really have been working with as it went through was the theme of the 6124 which came and went as we went through the year. We did finish up the year with this full channel in play and it really does talk to this idea of wanting to figure out what's going on. The the questions that can't really be answered easily or the questions that are always spinning in our mind. Why is this happening and why isn't this happening? And, and those types of things, especially with the year that we have put in because there has been a lot of these big questions in our life and understanding what exactly it all means has been probably a stepping stone for a lot of people to get over because it's been something where the answers weren't coming and they changed. And based on what was happening in the day, you would get one answer and then later in the day, you would have something else. So these were both big players or you could say slow moving planets. And sometimes people won't call Pluto a planet, but I feel it has a deep impact on the world, no matter what you want to call it. For most of the year, Pluto was in the gate 61. It did have a little stint in the gate 60, but for the most part, it was in the gate 61. From a body graph perspective or just from a perspective of everybody in general, the gate 61 is one of the three head gates and it comes from a place of pressure. The head center is a pressure center. And so what we would be feeling with this energy is this pressure to figure things out. Now, when you don't have a full channel, you just have the gate 61 being defined by Pluto, which was prevalent for a lot of the year. And finally, Uranus went into the gate 24. The Uranus activated the energy of the gate 24, which gives us this awareness of, oh, what does it mean? So the whole energy with the 6124 is that it is a very loud energy, we could say. There's a lot of busy talk, mind speak, you could say, that kind of loops over and over again. And if you think about an old fashioned record player where something would uh, skip and playing the same tune over and again until you actively shifted it. And that is very much like what this energy potentially felt like for a lot of people. Now, certain people would have been more affected by this energy. If you have the gate 61 defined in your body graph, or if you have the gate 24 in your body graph, to a degree, if you have the full channel, 
the reason why I say to a degree with a full channel is if you have the full channel normally defined in your body graph, what happens is you have a way of working with this energy because it's always with you, you could say. And when we know that something is defined, we're knowing that it's also going to be something where we're fixed in how we respond to it or how we work with it. So you may have felt that energy. So what this said was that we had this overlying energy of a lot of people wanting to figure out what was happening in the world. And the only way that you get the peace of mind is when that loop stops playing and you get the silence silence because that is when this awareness comes and we know that awareness comes when it comes it doesn't have a timeline that is consistent with human time it is mutative energy which means that it comes in a pulse and then it goes away so there definitely was potential to have big downloads of information or big downloads of mutative ideas or things that you never knew you could think about things that were in many ways, aha moments. But then, of course, there was always this other potential of getting locked in this mind loop. And of course, as soon as we have the Ajna involved, we also have mental anxiety because any of the Ajna gates have the potential to have mental anxiety within their energy because you're not really sure when things will show up. Now, if we add in the nodes, because the nodes are, you could say, the environment. So we have this environment that we're working with and all the planets sort of coloring the environment that we're in. What happened in September, September 6th to be specific, was that we had the activation or the nodal shift happened and we got into the 2034. The 2034 channel is an opposition, which means that it can be more common. But the other thing is that this is part of the whole integration circuit. The integration circuit has four different gates in it. So anybody who had any of the gates that connect to the integration circuit more than likely felt the impact of this energy. Now, the four gates that are in the integration circuit are the gate 20, the gate 34, the gate 10, and also the gate 57. If you have an open sacral in your body graph or you're a manifester, a projector, or a reflector, then this energy of pure power that goes directly from the sacral center right to the throat might have made you want to work harder, do more, be more active, or to use up all that busy energy. There is no awareness within this energy of the 2034. It's just this energy to be busy, to get things done. This is all about survival. How am I going to be in this world? How? What do I need to protect myself? So what we saw with people was many people did okay for the first little while, and then they started to burnout. Now this could happen with anybody really, but especially people with an open sacral. So this is where this energy was pushing everybody to move, to move, to move. The awareness wasn't there unless you had that in your body graph. And of course, there are people who didn't feel this energy much at all. They saw it in other people because maybe they don't connect to the energy through transits. What it also did was it made the overlying background frequency, you could say, a manifesting generator. And a manifesting generator signature is anger and also frustration. So that could have been the energy that we were feeling a lot of. A lot of anger, a lot of frustration, a lot of dissatisfaction where we're, with where you were in the world. And a lot of people decided to quit their jobs and move on to something else, which makes a lot of sense when we see that this background frequency was pushing people to be busy, to do more, and to feel satisfied in their work, and yet it wasn't happening. So we saw this, what they called the mass resignation, which makes a lot of sense. A lot of shifts, a lot of changes, this need to find the answers, all these things pushing at people to get things done, to get things right, to be satisfied with life. And it was a lot of pressure. So as the year was beginning to come to a close, we did have Venus go retrograde, and Venus adding pressure to this idea of the gate 61, finding answers, finding answers about relationship and the money that you make, the resources that you make, finding answers to get the good things that you want in your life again. And it also talked about limitations, the gate 60, and also the gate 54, which is this ambitious or talent that you want to propel you forward into the future to get better things in your life. And also the gate 38, which is really about this fighting to find the purpose that is your life. Why, why am I here? What is the point of my existence? All these big questions and big themes were being reviewed 
by Venus. Then on the 14th of January, we have Mercury going retrograde as well. Adding a little bit more of this review and going back over what already happened. Mercury was talking about a lot of the themes that we actually started out with because Saturn and Jupiter were going through the energy of the gate 19, the gate 41, the gate 60, and also the gate 61. So one more way that we were looking at what happened. What happened with those dreams that we started the year with? How close did we get to where we wanted to be? How close was our fantasy or the dream that we wanted to bring into reality? How close did we get to that happening? And did we feel supported? Did we feel supported by the government? Did we feel supported by the powers that be? Or did we feel as though we were let down in some way? A lot of those kind of questions for sure could have been activated during this retrograde. And from a personal spin, if you have the gates, any of those particular gates, the gate 60, the gate 61, the gate 19, or the gate 41, or the gate 30, the gate 49, the gate 3, or the gate 24 to find in your body graph, then this might have been a little bit more impactful for you when Mercury decided to go over those gates again to really bring home the lessons that you may have been working with. We also had Jupiter finally make a shift out of Aquarius and into Pisces. So going from an Airbnb that was awful that you hated the most to finally going back to your real home to the place where all your things are exactly where they are and you feel more secure. So Jupiter finally went to a place where it felt more secure, but yet it went into the gate 55, which can bring tremendous abundance. This is called the abundance of spirit. Yet the key with this energy is to surrender to what the universe wants to show you. Now, with all this background frequency of the 2034 energy, this busyness, this inability to slow down long enough to actually be open to the sign symbols and what the universe is trying to show you might have you looking one way when the answer or the thing that is being revealed to you is on the other side. The transit of Jupiter through the gate 55 can be more impactful for anybody who carries the gate 39, the gate 55, or even the full channel of the 3955. But something to keep in mind is that we all can potentially have some impact from this energy. So Jupiter in the gate 55 is really reminding us to begin to be open to what the universe wants to give us. This is where we in some way need to metaphorically let go of the wheel and say, okay, I've done everything I can. I don't know what else to do now. Please show me the way. Show me the path that I'm meant to walk. And that's what Jupiter is opening the door for us. And it's probably one of the hardest things to believe in something that you can't see. I think that for most of us, if we can't see something, it doesn't really exist. It's not really happening. But this energy says that even if you can't see it, I am working behind the scenes. And an analogy would be, for instance, if somebody has a cat, for instance, and you go to work and you come home and the cat is laying in the same area that it was laying when you went to work, nobody would actually believe that that cat never moved all day because it would have. It would have gone here, or there. It would have done something. And that is what the universe is always doing. We just can't see it happening. And suddenly things will just show up Obstacles will be released and many times magically and synchronistically, the universe will show its hand and suddenly things will shift in your world, in your reality. And that's the energy of the gate 55. Now, the key with the Jupiterian energies and how we can work best with them from a human design perspective is this idea that when we align with the energy of what the gate means and kind of, you could say, follow the rules because Jupiter is about rules, law, regulations, those types of things, then we can get the benefits because we're following the rules. And when we do, then Jupiter has the inability to give you what you want or what you need. Because if you think of something, somebody tells you, stand in this line, and if you stand in this line, I'm going to bring you this gift. 
and you say, okay, well, I'm going to stand on this line. But then you get bored and you say, well, the gift's not coming. I'm going to leave. And as soon as you leave, they come back and they have the gift, but you've missed it because you've left. So it truly is about this idea of trying to align with the energy and allow it to work its best way. So in a lot of ways, we could say that the energy was very similar until we get to the 13th of January. And that is when Saturn shifts into the gate 13. Pluto follows by shifting into the gate 60 from the gate 61. And Mercury also goes retrograde, as I just talked about. Now we also have on the 18th of January, a nodal shift. So suddenly we're moving away from that busy, frenetic, powerful, sacral workforce energy. Now we're moving to the gate eight and also the gate 14. Now the way the nodes work is that you have the south node that begins the three month period. And about halfway through, you have the north node being activated within the environment, you could say. So it doesn't mean that there's a, a stop date in the middle. It just means that there is like this feeling of potentially a shift in energy. Now, we didn't have any shift in the energy of the 2034 because that's a full channel and there's really no way that you can kind of separate those two an energies at all. Even if you had those like nodes within your body graph, this idea of being able to shift the energy is very difficult. That's something that Ra'aruhu said that the energy of any of the three oppositions as a nodal theme in your body graph or in the environment all around us can be something that is a continuum as opposed to a shifting theme. So now we know that we're moving from the 2034 into two brand new energies that are individual energies, creative energies, but also talk about abundance in a lot of ways because we have the gate 14, which can be a lucky energy. So ultimately this could potentially feel like a very big shift especially when we have all these other players moving as well, like Saturn and Pluto moving as well. So suddenly we have this big shift of energy that is bringing a brand new environment for us to work within. So the nodes begin with the gate 14 and then we move to the gate eight, the gate 14. Some keywords with that would be accumulation of power, skilled interaction, grace and control, attaining new skills, talent, and trying to hold on to power. This is also very impactful for anybody who carries the energy of the gate two, especially. And this is giving you the power to move through and maybe have a new direction in life. This can be, bring you natural luck. This can give you more energy. But if you're somebody who is an open sacral, remember the gate 14 connected to the gate two. If you have a hanging gate two, will activate sacral energy for you. And this is about you learning how to work the energy, not allowing the energy to work you. And if that happens, then you can get a lot of good things out of this energy. This would be like if you have the gate two hanging, and that could be for a lot of people, anybody in general who has a gate two hanging, you have this place that you want to go, this direction that you feel is right for you, but you don't have the energy to propel you forward. The gate 14 will bring you that energy so that you can really start to move forward in those things that are important to you. But remember, when we have Mercury and Venus also retrograde, trying to start new things and get things off the ground and begin brand new projects may not actually work exactly the way you want it to. So having the time to focus on the places you want to put the energy, remember the nodes will be in play for quite a while before they change again on March 14th, 2022. And from February 4th, 2022 to April 30th, 2022, we do have all planets going forward at that point. So this is a time where you can start to move that energy forward and start those new projects. And it doesn't mean that you can't start the projects earlier if you want to, but it does mean that the potential of things moving a little bit more easily and going the way you want to may be greater when the planets are not going retrograde. As far as the nodes go, if they do connect to your body graph in some way, they will continue to connect with your body graph for the whole nodal transit. So it's not something that you have to worry about because there is a focus on the gate 14 for the first half. And then there's a focus on the gate eight for the second half of the transit period. What it does mean is that that could be something that we see in our environment. Those are th themes that we could be seeing popping up, but we will still have the connection with our body graph. So that's something important to keep in mind. Now, when we move on to the gate eight, 
and we have the second half so you could say about a month and a half in but again there's no hard and fast rule now we're moving into new energy and the keywords with this are making a contribution through your personal way or profile feeling your worth and also your value because you have contributed to the group this is the energy of the creative role model and if you have a hanging gate one or a gate eight or even a one eight channel this can be a little bit more impactful for you. But ultimately, I think the most impact might be just from the hanging gate that is the harmonic. So in other words, if you have a hanging gate one, you might feel the most impact. This can also make you more sensitive to people who criticize you in any way if you have that hanging gate. And that could be a potential for a lot of people where we're feeling that pinch of when somebody doesn't see what we see, they don't want what we have to give. The energy of the 1-8 is a projected channel, which means that it's all about being invited or recognized for what you have to say. And when that happens, then we can get those important creative ideas, that expression of ourselves that we want to give to the collective out into the world in a way that it's being seen and respected for what exactly we have to give. And that's the energy that we might be feeling. And the other theme to think about is that the gate eight and also the gate 14 are both individual energy. So this is our own process. We may want to give to the collective, but it's all about our contribution about how we want to do something and our individuality and our uniqueness. And giving it to the world because we know that it can be helpful in some way. And with the gate 14 activated, we also have this ability to be seen for our talents, to have people go, oh yeah, you have something we need. And to see other people for their talents, to be able to get good people to work with you if you have to build a team of some sort. So you're able to see the talent that is out in the world and bring them into your fold, you could say. So ultimately this is potentially a lot less frenetic. It is more about a personal process of doing your own thing and really creatively inspired. And that's the one thing that we will see with the nodes as we're moving through 2022, this idea that there is a lot of creative ability that is being infused into the collective. So if we look at 2020 and 2021 as a cycle where we were tilling the soil, getting prepared for the seeds that we want to plant, 2022 is saying, okay, here are our seeds. Let's plant them. Let's see what we can get. And it doesn't mean that we're going to have a tree in a year, but it does mean that we have an ability to actually start to infuse what we have to give into the collective in a way that we hope that eventually it will take hold. And when Saturn moves to the gate 13, Saturn was in the gate 13 in 2021 already from May 5th to June 10th, 2021. So if there were themes that were happening in your life when Saturn was transiting the energy of the gate 13, this can be about the keywords with this would be the gate of the listener. It's uh, also cooperation. It could be secrets being revealed, government, politicians, political energy, secrets about politicians that we might have been seeing or that were revealed at that particular time and might be revealed again. And it's also about this equality and wanting people to have an equal footing. And I think that's one of the big key themes for 2022 is to try and have more equal rights for everybody so that everybody has an opportunity to succeed in life. This is about wanting to find better ways to improve humanity and also persevering and finding the direction that is correct for the collective because the gate 13 is one of the gates of the sleeping phoenix which is all about direction. This is the direction for the collective through the experiences of our lives. The thing about Saturn is it is one of the energies that takes its time. It's very slow and plodding and doesn't go fast. And it is all about structures. So this is about old structures and sort of wanting to keep the old structures the way they are and always looking at the past and how things were done in the past and wanting to keep it for the future. But there's also this push and drive that we will feel that people don't want the past anymore and they want things to change. And we could really look at Pluto moving into the gate 60 as that particular change because Pluto is really about moving into the gate 60. This is about limitation. And the thing about limitation that comes from this gate or this energy, and it is the end of the whole human design mandala. This is the last energy before we begin a brand new cycle. So it's a long time in coming for Pluto to come here. Pluto says, 
let's transform, let's break down the old structures that no longer work. But we're going to do it in a way that you have to use what you have already. You don't have a bunch of new tools that you're going to be able to work with. You're going to have to use the tools that you've always had or the tools that you have within you right now and use them in a way that you can bring new things into the collective, bring new ways of being with old material. So in other words, Pluto is here to transform, to bring the truth, to get rid of all the old structures that no longer work. And if we look at the gate 13 in Saturn, that's trying to hold on to this energy and say, no, we're always going to have it this way. This is the structures that we want. Pluto's saying, no, that's not going to work for me. We need to plow it down and we need to rebuild. And that is what Pluto is really talking about. And it's talking about it through this limitation because the whole key with this limitation is limitation is the first step towards transcendence. In other words, when you transcend the limitations that life has given you, that is when you are able to no longer have those limitations be limiting, you could say, and you kind of level up. And that's the whole point of the energy of the gate 60. So as much as Saturn might be wanting to hold on to the old structures, Pluto is saying it has to go. And Jupiter in a better place is showing us how we can make things better, how we can expand, how we can have the Renaissance, even though we've had limitation, even though we will be working through limitation and some level of restrictions through 2022, how can we creatively find ways that we can feel okay within those limitations? And when we look at the nodal energy that we're working with, again, that's all creative energy. That's creative, mutative energy that is bringing brand new mutative ideas into the collective. So it's all working to say, yes, we have to get rid of the old and change is inevitable, but in the end, we're going to have something better that will be more sustainable, more stable for the future that we want to build for ourselves. We already talked about Pluto, but I just want to go a little deeper with the themes of the lines of Pluto that Pluto will be going through the first, second and third line. And just a bit of a heads up to the dates that Pluto will be shifting and the line and what exactly it is telling us and how the limitation looks based on the transits of Pluto to the different line. So when we talk about January 15th, when I first talk about Pluto going into the gate 60, this is really the foundation of what limitation means. And this is really talking about this transcendence of limitation. Now, if we look at Pluto, when it actually did this, it did a little dip into 2021. It dipped into the gate 60 just for a couple of months. We did have the Suez Canal where the boat kind of stopped the flow of traffic. And we had a lot of supply chain issues that were created at that particular time. So this was a manifestation of a real material way that Pluto showed us what the limitation would look like. This is pressure from the root center. And this pressure is to mutate in some way because it is the gate 60 is mutative energy. It is individual energy. So this mutation is talking about having old things and new things coming together to create something brand new, you could say. The new comes from the gate three and the old comes from the gate 60. The full channel can speak to genetic changes and changes in the future generations because a lot of mutations are said to be created from this particular energy. And it is a format energy, which means that it starts the flow for the individual energy in a lot of ways. So the mutations that begin here flow to the rest of the collective or through the individual energy out into the collective. The line one is really talking about there's two ways of how we deal with limitation. And we could say it is in the most common way of limitation as in we are physically not able to go places or we don't have all the things we need. And there's two ways that you can work with this. The highest version would be to say that, yeah, I there is limitation, but I can work with this. I can make do with what I have. The other perspective is becoming very restless with this energy and not being able to cope with the limitations and feeling like you're kind of trapped in a cage and you can't really get out. Ideally, we want to work with the energy in a way that it is beneficial to us and that we're not feeling like we're being overwhelmed by it. And I think a lot of ways that just knowing that this is part of the energy that we're feeling all around us can be helpful to allow you to know what's happening. And instead of feeling restless, potentially you could 
direct that energy into something creative because we know that individual energy is always going to be best worked with with a creative flow of some kind. This could even be moving your body because especially with root pressure, moving your body and having some kind of exercise routine or something where you feel able to expend some of that energy can sometimes be helpful. The other thing about the root center is if we talk about just a center as a, as a pressure center, because it is a pressure center, we have the head center and the root center. The thing about the root center is this need to feel free because if we have an open root center, anybody who has an open root center, a lot of the themes are you want to get a bunch of things done so that you'll have freedom at the end of it. This is going to be a collective energy that we're feeling this pressure to have freedom of some sort. Here, it's the freedom to not feel limited by your surroundings or by something in your life. Now, if there are things in your life that are limiting you that you can actually eliminate, then this would be the time that you can actually start to work through that because this is Pluto and it is an ability to transform what you have, transform the limitations, transform them in a way that you feel comfortable with what you have or transform them in a way where you're breaking out of the limitations because it is the right thing to do at that particular time. So you still have an ability to work with this energy but how you specifically work with it is really going to be related to you as an individual and how it best works for you as well. And if we look at the opposition of the gate 60, a lot of times we can have sort of a healing or an energy to show us how we can in some way feel like we have it handled. And the opposition in this case is the gate 56, which is really about imagination and finding different ways or creative ways to look at where we are. It could be dropping into your imagination and forgetting about the limitations that you have all around you and or finding creative ways to work with the limitation that you have all around you. So it really does speak to creativity being a big key for how you can work with this energy for the year of 2022. February 13th, we have Pluto moving into the line two. And it's really interesting because the 60 line two is when the American Declaration of Independence happened. And so it is actually going to be a Pluto return for the USA. How that will play out, we'll see. The other perspective is that this energy is called decisiveness. And what this says is that there is this facade that we are accepting limitations, but maybe the limitations that we feel are not really there anymore. So in some way, this makes me wonder if things are going to start to open up more and maybe things with the pandemic may start to get a little bit better. I feel like there's two dates, March when we have Neptune moving into the gate 36. And also I have this concept of uh, the February 13th, where we start to see something change again, where Pluto is actually moving to the line two, where we still feel like we're limited, but it may be this concept of a bird with the, the door of the cage open. And are you too scared to go out into the world again? And is that what people are feeling? Maybe they're frightened to go out in the world again. But this says that there are potential limitations that have been released in some way and we may not actually see them as being released, but they actually are there. And so this could be a time to be open to potentially having something be a little bit more open. What that looks like, I'm not sure, but there is potential for something to be more open, less limitation, or this feeling that we are more limited than we are, but in fact, maybe we have more openness than we think we do. And the one line that I thought was interesting is that, Ra Ru, who said that it's like getting addicted to a medication, even though we're healthy. So in other words, we're taking a medicine that we don't actually need anymore. And I thought that was kind of interesting. So let's see how that plays out. And on March 23rd, we have Pluto going into the line three, and this is called conservatism. This is where we're physically pushing away from the limitations. We're saying, I've had enough of this. I'm not doing this anymore. I'm going to get out no matter what. Now, this getting out may not necessarily work as you want it to. And instead of waiting for divine timing or when things are being released or when the door is open, you're getting to this point where you're just going to push the door open and whatever meets you, you're okay with it. And, or you just, you just say, well, whatever. I mean, if I have to break the rules, if I have to push against this, 
I'm going to accept whatever I get because I can't do this anymore. So there's that potential or the other potential is to have this ability to know that you are going to get released very soon and you, you're just waiting for the universe to open that door for you because you know it will happen. So there's potential for both of those energies to show up and we only have a very short period of time for Pluto to actually be transiting the uh, the line three because it does move quite fast in the beginning of the year and then with all the retrogrades it actually slows down. So we only have the line three being transited for a short period of time and that would be from March 23 third until June 7th. Now, relatively speaking for Pluto, that seems like a short period of time, but that's how long that energy will be around. And for the rest of 2022, we do have it going into the line two and also the line one, and that kind of shifts back and forth. And I have all the dates here so that you can see when it will go in different lines. We also have Pluto moving into the gate 61 for the last time. And we won't see it again in the gate 61 in our lifetime because it will finish up its transit through the gate 61. And it will be basically transiting in the gate 60 for the next couple of years. In fact, 2023, it just transits in the gate 60. But one thing to keep in mind is that when it does transit into the gate 61 for the last time, and that will be from... September 5th to November 10th, 2022, we will not have the activation of Uranus in the gate 24. So this will just be the gate 61 being activated for that time. So we have this whole brand new nodal energy, this nodal environment that we're working with. And we have Jupiter moving on January 22nd into the gate 37. This is really speaking about this sense of community, rebuilding communities, expanding communities, new ways of looking at communities. How can we build a community based on the limitations or the restrictions that we have in the world right now, that based on the transformations that Pluto is trying to bring into the collective? How can we build a community, find a community, and be part of that community in a way that we haven't done it before, in a way that is unique and innovative? And this will be most impactful for anybody who has the Gate 37, the Gate 40, or also the 3740 channel. So if we get back to this theme of community, when we have Jupiter in this energy, Jupiter's saying, I don't want you to tell me what to do. I want to be part of this community, to have my own voice in this community, to listen when I want to listen, but also to have the freedom to express myself individually as well. So this is kind of like, I want to be in a community that fits me and I fit in and I'm respected for what I have to offer as much as I am listening to what other people are having to offer as well. There is also this theme that Jupiter says that you do not have to be up in the Himalayan mountains or you don't have to be in an ashram to be able to attain your spiritual community or your spirituality in general. Your ability to be out in the real world doing all the things that we do to continue to live on planet earth or in the Maya and yet you can find your spiritual energy or your spiritual connection within the environment it isn't about having to be in a special place to be able to connect with that other part of you. It is about connecting with that other part of you despite where you are, despite how the world around you is operating. And to have that ability to connect, to find that piece of you within the collective based on being in an environment that may not be in quotation marks, conducive to your spiritual growth. But it's, again, you are working within the limitations of the world. And by working within the limitations, you are transcending the limitations and up leveling in some way. January 29th, Venus goes direct. And that is when we can start to feel things start to move because Mars will connect with Venus just after it stops going retrograde and together they will push forward. And what that really talks to is this idea of all the time that you were in this space of thinking about what you wanted to do with your relationships, with the way you make your money, with the resources that you have, with the way you take care of yourself, you're starting to say, okay, now all the changes that I wanted to make, all the things that matter to me, I can start to move forward and bring them into the collective or into reality for my life. 
And with Venus retrograding in Capricorn, this is really about breaking out of some tradition that you've always had, going somewhere else, beginning something new that matters to you. February 4th, we have Mercury going direct. And as I said before, from February 4th to April 30th, this is when we have all the planets going direct. And this is the energy that says all systems go and we can start to move forward. In many ways, we could say that this is a time where we're shaking off the energy of 2021 and beginning truly the energy of 2022. On February 19th, Jupiter moves again, and this is where it moves into the gate 63. The gate 63 is all about patterns the future, predicting the future. This is also a head gate or a pressure energy that we can feel the pressure to have our doubts about things all around us answered in a way that we feel as though we're getting the right answers. Many times we have this energy where we're thinking that, okay, I, I don't care what answer I get as long as I get an answer. When Jupiter's going through this energy, Jupiter's saying, you're not going to take just any old answer. In fact, you're going to take the answer that is the best for you, the one that matters the most or the one that makes the most sense. This is also the energy we're expressing what we are doubtful about. Things that are floating around our head, the questions that have answers or the things that we say that I'm not really sure that that's going to work. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't look like that's a good pattern. It doesn't look like that's a good way to go. The nice thing about this is that when we have all this information out on the table, you can look at it and see what it is. What is real? What isn't real? And can we have other people have their input on what they think is real? Their doubts. What are their doubts? Are their doubts similar to ours? Are they different? How can we work together to come up with a plan to get the right answers, the answers that will make sense and have the most impact in the future when we bring it to the collective? On March 2nd, we have Saturn moving again. It's now moving into the gate 49. And the gate 49 is all about revolution, trying to make better systems for the people. And it's not just for power. This is for the people. How can we make things better for the people? This does talk about food, food distribution, who gets what, who doesn't get what, structures that support how food is distributed in the collective, you could say, or in the Maya or for people. What this is saying is that Saturn wants to hold on to the structures that we have always had before. It doesn't want to have a revolution. So we're looking at this idea of wanting to keep the same systems. This could mean that there's potential for food insecurity because Saturn does talk about people who are disenfranchised, the people who have a, a more difficult parts of life. This can talk about elderly, but it also does talk about when we add in the concept of Pluto transforming, and it is a theme of transforming a lot of different parts of the world. We have this idea that we could start looking at other ways of how we have food that comes to our table. So in other words, we might be looking at ways that we grow our own produce, ways that we grow our own food, ways that we get our own food in some way. It could be a change in how we eat and how we distribute the food. But it could also mean at this time that the structures that be want to keep things as they are, yet change and limitation is forcing it to have to change in some way, to make better plans and better ways to get the food and the things that people need. Because ultimately, if we have an issue with food, then that is going to cause a revolution and people will push back because that is something that we all need to survive on planet Earth. March 7th, we have Neptune moving into the gate 36 and it means that it will no longer be in the gate 22 anymore. It's finished its transit there. It's been transiting in the gate 22 since 2019. So it's been there for a very long time. It spoke about grace and to a degree suffering and how we cope as individuals in a human race in regards to how challenges are met in our life. I know a lot of people have different connections for where the pandemic came from, but for me, it really does connect to Neptune. And I think that because Neptune has this connection with poisons, diseases, there may be potential that when Neptune shifts to a new gate, because it's been the same gate, the gate 22 for so long, 
and it moves to the gate 36, that maybe some things will shift with the pandemic. That is a hope, but of course it's not a guarantee, but that's something that looks like an end mark or when things begin to start to recede again. The other perspective that Neptune in the gate 22 brought was this concept of dissolving beauty or natural beauty becoming something that was more common. And of course there are other ways that the themes were showing up with the Neptune going through the gate 22. When we moved to the gate 36, it already did move to the gate 36. Neptune did at uh, one point in May to August, 2021. And anybody who has the gate 36, the gate 35, or even the full channel, the 35, 36 might be more impacted by this energy. Now, when we talk about Neptune from the perspective of human design, this is really talking about a, a veil being over something. So we don't get the full picture. This can be dreamy energy from an astrological perspective. It's about fantasy, romance, magic. And sometimes we want to get so lost in this idea of fantasy that we get lost in our dreams or lost in this idea of wanting to take altering drugs into our body so that we can get lost in that perspective as well. When we have it in the gate 36, the last time this happened was in 1857 to 1860. And a few themes that showed up, the book Madame Bovary by Gustave Flaubert was partially published. So when we think about the gate 36, there's a lot of ways we can look at it. One is that it is connected to the gate 35 and goes directly to the throat center. It is part of a manifesting energy. It is also uh, an experiential energy because it is part of the abstract channel, the 3536. And this really talks about getting experience and coming into experiences very green or very inexperienced you could say and then getting into something and as we all know whenever we start something new or we're a novice in some way a lot of times things won't go to plan and we get something completely different than what we expected because there is a lot of expectation in abstract collective energy the other perspective is that we say that this can be going into some crisis of some sort because the gate 36, you could say that when you are a novice and you are going into a new experience and things don't go as planned, then some people would call that a crisis. And everybody has a different definition of what that means. This is also about crisis resolution and being able to solve a crisis by exposing things that are happening all around us. The other perspective is anything coming from the solar plexus can have some sexual or romantic component connected to it. Now, when we have Neptune going into the gate 36, this could be a, sort of a more of a veiled way of sexuality or your sexual expression. Because if we look at the world around us, in a lot of ways, we look at music videos, for instance, and how a lot of these music videos that we have, have some level of sexuality contained within them. And it is sort of in the public viewing where do we have this potential for Neptune to start, start to veil things that maybe things are happening in a more discreet way or a more quiet way in that is not as public as it is right now. So it makes an interesting connection when we see that Madame Bovary, which was really talking about a woman who had adulterous affairs and she created scandals. Like this book was so scandalous in 1857 that it would had to go through a lot of, a lot of loopholes in order for it to be published. So in all things, we know there's a duality. So when we say that something is being veiled, we could also have this times of the, the veil being ripped away as well. And that would be when things kind of come out into the public that we hadn't expected or are surprised about. And another new experience that happened in the United States, for instance, was that the first oil well was actually drilled in Pennsylvania. And I think one of the most interesting things that happened at that time, and it was just when Neptune was kind of moving out of the gate 36, was this idea that George Crumb created what was called the potato chip. And the interesting part is that it was created in a way just kind of out of nowhere, out of just trying to do something different or a crisis because I think a customer wasn't happy with one of his dishes. And so then he sliced potatoes so thin that they could be crispy and the customer wouldn't complain. And then he found these potato chips. So it, it really is talking about this idea of 
the potential for new experiences and new ways of experiencing life and jumping into the deep end and not really knowing where we're going and only figuring it out as we go, leading to something kind of innovative or brand new that we hadn't expected. Because again, this is, uh, we're going into Neptune territory and we're going into the place of not really knowing what we're actually going to get. So this could be planning for experiences, expecting them to be a certain way and them being not anything like that. And they could be better or they could be something like less than what you wanted it to be. So the key is that we might have expectations for how things will go, but the answer to that would be they may not go exactly as you expect. And things may be hidden until later on where suddenly you get a realization of what exactly is happening. On March 14th, we have Jupiter moving into another gate as well. Now, Jupiter's following after Neptune and it will eventually in April, connect with Neptune. So if we think about all the characteristics of Neptune, now we have Jupiter coming in and Jupiter is exactly the opposite. Jupiter is about expansion. It's about growth. It's about making things bigger. And one thing that is of note and interest is that Uranus in 2010 and 2011 transited through the gate 36 and Uranus always brings some level of unusual something. And that is when all the Fifty Shades of Grey books became very popular in the collective. So when we look at Jupiter coming into the energy of the gate 22, we see this level of grace and grace under fire or this ability to withstand what's going on all around you and have some level of feeling good about yourself because you actually managed to go through it. It's easier to potentially do it with Jupiter there because Jupiter can give you that strength and that exuberance to say, okay, I can get through this potentially. It'll also impact people who have the hanging gate 12 and you probably would have been impacted for a while with Neptune in the gate 22, as well as people who have the gate 22 and also the, the full channel, the 1222. Now, in many ways, we could say that Neptune stripped back this beauty standard and la allowed people to become more natural and have natural beauty be part of it. What it feels like is Jupiter's going to ramp that all up and bring beauty back in a big way because it is expansive. And it is about this energy of having this ability to look beautiful, to have things potentially all about style and not really worry about trying to find the deeper meaning of life. That is potential with Jupiter there. And that would be because it's in the detriment in one line in the second line, but it is also exalted or you could say the, the higher expression of the energy in the line five. And this really talks about this being an emotional channel. And it is a 1222 is an emotional channel, but this is also an individual emotional channel, which talks about creativity and expressing yourself in a creative way. This is individuality that expresses itself in a way that you feel good about what you're expressing to the world, but it doesn't necessarily mean that you have a feeling or care about how people accept it from you. So there's that potential for creativity, but there's also this idea that while many times we will go out into the world and decide that we're going to do something if we don't feel, even if we don't feel it, like if you don't feel like you want to do something, but yet you say, okay, well, I'm going to do it because I'm supposed to. With Jupiter in the gate 22, you may decide, no, I'm not going to do it because I'm not going to be my best form and it's better for me to not do it this time and wait until I feel better or feel more like I'm in the mood to do it. And what that means is that you are showing the world your best self. You're actually stepping out with your best foot forward and not giving people something that is not the truest version of you because you're not feeling forced to go out and be somebody who you're not. So that's where Jupiter can really show us that we can actually just go out and be ourselves, but we can go out on our own terms. And that would be what Jupiter would be encouraging us to do. And keep in mind, if you do have a hanging gate 12 and this sets you up for an emotional channel, there's potential for you to have these emotional ups and downs, or you could say the blues or the melancholy. And it's all about creative expression and moving through the energy and allowing it to go where it's meant to go. And when we know that this is potentially part of, especially with an open solar plexus, because that is something that can be more influenced by the energy of a an emotional center that is going to be connected or activated during that particular time. And we can also keep in mind that this is actually a manifesting channel. So 
things might be able to be brought into form at this point, creative things like music or something that is an expression of your individuality. March 15th, we have the nodes shifting again, and they're shifting into another opposition. This is the 4323. This is a connection from the Ajna to the throat. So this really talks about this idea of new and innovative ideas, things that have never been seen before. So when I talked about 2020 and 2021 being this time of making all the soil ready for some new ideas, new seeds. These are the new seeds coming in. These are the new mutative ideas. Now we talk about the 4323. Again, this is a continuum. There is no beginning and an end of this energy like you would say with the nodes where there's more influence in the first half and, and something a little different in the next half. This is the environment that we're working in, which means that it is conducive to the mutative or the new things that are coming into the being, things that are going to shift the world in the future, basically. Now, these are not things that are overnight successes. This is something that we have to take time, effort, and energy to make things real and make things happen. We also have to remember that as soon as we have an Ajna gate, the gate 43, involved in this environment that we're living in, we do have this energy of mental strain, we could say, or a mental anxiety to a degree. But we don't have the pressure that we had with the gate 61 and the 6124 channel that we had in 2021. So there can be this anxiety to a degree, and this anxiety really is related to the idea that you have all these mutative ideas and you're scared that nobody's going to be able to listen to you or nobody will hear what you have to say because you know what you have to say is really important. But the thing about these energies is that it's very mutative and very different and very new and not everything will take, but those things that are sort of things that stick with you, that you hold on to, that you know are correct, will eventually probably get traction, but they only get traction when you're talking about anything coming from the Ajna or anything above the throat. They only get traction when the right people hear you say or talk about those types of things. This is something that needs other people to make it happen. So it's all about the right people, the right timing, and the right timing comes when people ask you for your input, because again, this is another projected energy or projected channel. So this is the playing field we're on. This is a playing field where we have a lot of mutative ideas, a lot of new and innovative, brand new concepts that we've never seen before that can really bring a lot of interesting and transformative concepts and actual manifestations in the world later on, because ultimately it is futuristic ideas. Now this environment isn't a busy environment, but this is an environment that we might have a lot of people saying, I know, I know this, I know that, I know, and they may or may not know, but that might be something you hear a lot of because that's an environment that we'll be sort of working with for those couple of months. And that would be the first quarter of 2022 completed. We'll notice that the first quarter of 2022 is quite busy because a lot of planets that were retrograde start going forward. So in other words, a lot of planets are moving and that's why we had Jupiter moving so much and those types of things. Now, as the quarters progress, we will see that things slow down a bit. We have more retrograde. So we're going over the old energy that we've already sort of went through earlier on in the year. And that's kind of how it works every year in that there are retrogrades and then there are times of going forward. It doesn't always work exactly in the same timeline, but it does work in that sort of cycle. So for the second quarter, we started out with May 10th to June 2nd, we have Mercury going retrograde for the second time. Mercury goes retrograde about three times every year, so that's very normal. Now, the interesting part about Mercury going retrograde in the first half of the year or the first very beginning in January is that Mercury went retrograde in mainly root gates. So this pressure to get things done, and that would be the pressure that you're feeling during the retrograde. And we get to May 10th, the gates that Mercury is retrograding through are both throat gates. So we have the gate 20 and also the gate 8 both individual energies. One is talking about being in the present moment, seeing what you have in this world right now. So Mercury's looking at what do you have in your life? What do you want to change in your life? And it's all about looking at what is actually there in front of you right in this very moment. And that's the gate 20. This is also about unity and it is 
tapping into the integration circuit that we had a lot of in 2021 at the sort of last part of 2021 with the 2034. This is tapping into the integration circuit again, but it's not giving that power. So anybody who has part of the integration circuit or the whole integration circuit might feel this transit even more impactfully. And that would be anybody who has the gate 34, the gate 20, the gate 10, and also the gate 57. So it means that you might be more impacted in this concept of wanting to shift up your life or seeing things in your reality that you're not actually very pleased with and that you want to go forward and change into in the future. The other perspective is that we have the gate eight being transited and the gate eight is another throat gate. And this is also the creative role model that we first had when we started with the nodal change early in January as well. So we're revisiting the theme of the environment or the nodes that we had early in January and potentially starting to recalibrate or think about, review what happened, you could say, and potentially thinking about what you want to bring into the future. What contribution do you want to bring in the future? How did it work out when you had the energy from the nodal transit? And in fact, you could have been getting some ideas for how you want it to contribute. And now you're really kind of thinking about how you're going to bring that into reality, how you're going to manifest it, because this is energy that is throat energy that gets to the throat. This is also a time where if you have a hanging gate one, there's potential for you to feel more sensitive sensitive to criticism from people and anybody who has a gate one or the gate eight or the full channel, the one eight might feel this energy more impactfully. So definitely a time of review and recalibration about where you want to put your energy and your individual energy in the future. April 4th, we have Jupiter moving into the gate 36. Now this is where Jupiter is catching up with Neptune because we know that Neptune is now in the gate 36. By the time Jupiter reaches Neptune, Jupiter is going to connect with Neptune in the gate 36 line two. The interesting thing about the gate 36 is that we've already talked about Jupiter being in the gate 36 and what it feels like and also Neptune being in the gate 36 and what that feels like. When they come together, we have this combination of two energies that are very at home in Pisces or within the energy that they're in right now. When we talk about the second line, this is the energy that says, we are going to whip up the, the energy all around you. We're going to show things that you've never seen before. We're going to bring up things into the light, things that we may not have seen. Crises that were hidden are going to be shown to the collective. But it's also a blessing in disguise because only when we see things in the light can we actually come up with a solution to how to solve these crises. If something is festering, so for instance, if you have something that is in your body and it's festering and you don't know that it is festering inside of you, when it potentially shows up in your life or something shows you that there is something inside of you, that's what it can be handled. And this is what this is showing. This is something that is festering, something that we need to have come to the light. It's an expansion of the energy of crisis and crisis resolution of let's see what exactly Neptune has been hiding or things have been hidden from us and how can we move into the future with some kind of a solution that will make things better for everybody. And this is where they say you bring up something, a subject that somebody doesn't want to hear about, but in the end, it's the elephant in the room that everybody sort of maybe knows that are, is there, but they're not exactly sure if it's there, or maybe they do know it's there, but they don't want to talk about it. But then eventually it's like, okay, now we have to talk about this and we can't avoid it anymore. So this is a time when things might get sort of dusted up or disturbed. And especially for somebody who has the gate 35 hanging or the gate 36 or the full channel, the 35, 36. But it's also a time where you can actually get some good closure some good healing and kind of a progression where you can start to move forward in your life and that thing that has been festering is actually going to be solved and it's not going to be a problem that is slowly getting worse over time in fact it's going to be solved in some way a couple of days before Jupiter and Neptune come together we have Uranus going into the gate two, and that's going to happen on April 8th. Now, anybody who has the hanging gate 14, it's the complete opposite of the nodes that we had in the beginning of the year, where now we have anybody with the hanging gate 14, 
the Hanging Gate 2 and also the 214 channel, but especially anybody with the Hanging Gate 14 can feel that they know or you know where you want to direct the, your power and energy. A lot of times when you have a Hanging Gate 14, you don't necessarily know where you want to put your abundance, where you want to gain your power, where you want to direct all your energy so that you can get things to work to your favor or to build the power abundance and the good luck that the Gate 14 can bring. The Gate 2 is bringing this energy of a direction. Now with Uranus going within this energy, it did happen last year. So you might've got a heads up on what it felt like for you if you have this configuration. But for all of us, it is going to activate this energy of our magnetic monopole because that is where it is contained. Even if we don't have the gate two defined or the gate 14 defined or even the full channel, we may feel that we have some sense of direction. And it really might be a direction that we hadn't expected or some that is unusual or strange for us something that we would never have thought of but for some reason it feels like it's the correct thing for us to do this does also talk about astrology human design or anything that is internet based or something that is online in some way having a new direction or changing direction in some way so this happened in 2021 from june 18th to october 24th so if this was something that you felt during this time, this might be sort of picking up that energy again and continuing on where you began. On May 2nd, Jupiter enters the gate 25. But the interesting thing about the gate 25 is that it straddles between both Pisces and Aries. And it straddles between Pisces and Aries in the line too. So on May 10th, Jupiter moves into Aries and it seems as though this is sort of an important time or an important line. And this is the gate 25 line two, which is called the existentialist. Now we talk about the gate 25. This is one of the four love gates, and this is called collective love or love of spirit. Now the highest expression of this energy is always going to be just going out and helping the world to go out and assist people because you just want to. It's not because you have a motive. It's not because you want to have people look at you as though you're being special or you're a good person. It's just out there doing your thing and helping people. The other perspective is that we can go out and help people, but we have a hidden agenda. What am I going to get out of it? Who will see me? And there's those types of energies. So the highest expression of this energy is just going out and helping people. This is considered a mystical line in a lot of ways, especially since it does go between two particular signs, Pisces and Aries. The other perspective is this idea of being in the now, seeing what you can do in the now and really connecting with that present moment and having the experience of seeing everything all around you instead of always going forward or going back. This is connecting with the present moment, seeing what you see and assisting the world or giving part of the spirit of who you are or even some level of unconditional love to the world. So it sounds like there's potential for this to be a, a really nice time where people are starting to give the spirit of who they are just because they want to help humanity in some way. And it is loving everybody and loving the spirit of everybody being their own individual self. This is individual energy. This can be impactful for anybody who has the Hanging Gate 51, the gate 25 or the full channel, the 2551. Now the 2551 channel is a channel of initiation, which means that we are initiated by something that shifts our reality in a way that we can never look at our world the same way. It is like a puncturing of the illusion of the Maya or the illusion of our life where we can't really see anything the way we used to see it. So a lot of ways we can compare the 2551 channel to sort of the matrix, you could say, where we see something beyond what we see and nothing can ever go back to the original way it used to be. So when we talk about the gate 51, it's all about a shocking something. And shock doesn't always have to be something unpleasant. It could just mean something that you really had no idea would happen the way it did. And I do talk about this channel because later on in May, we'll talk about the idea that we will have the full channel of initiation or the 2551 activated by Chiron as well as Jupiter. 
On May 5th, we have Saturn going through the Fates or the Gate 30. And we did talk a lot about the Fates last year. I do have a full video on the Fates. And if you want to check that out, I will leave the link below. The other thing is that Jupiter went through the Gate 30 last year a couple of times. And we did talk about how each line had a specific strategy about how to work with the Fates. Now the Fates in a nutshell are basically when we want to do something or we want to have an experience in our life and something gets in the way. The challenges that we meet on our path that we know we, we will eventually go through, but we certainly don't like when we hit them. The thing about Saturn going through the fates is that I think it's really going to be something a little bit different than when Jupiter was going through because we have Jupiter, which is a benefit or something that let's have a good time, let's party, let's enjoy ourselves. With Saturn going through, it seems as though Saturn is more conservative and Saturn is more like, okay, let's just follow the rules. Let's do what we're meant to do. So there's this potential to have more resilience, to be able to work with the energy of the fates and know that even though there is a blockage of some sort that you almost have more strength to go through it which is kind of odd when you think about Saturn because you would think that Saturn is going to be so much of a push against you to stop you in your path but in this way I think Saturn might be very helpful for us to actually be okay with what comes in our way and be okay to manage it until it kind of moves out of the way. It could also talk to structures, governments, um, the management or the infrastructure that the world kind of counts on having little glitches you could say but then going through them and being okay and each one will have its own line and I'm not going to go through the lines because I did do the full video and it will explain each one so like I said you can check that out if you think it will be helpful I'm also leaving the just a little bit of keynotes just to keep in mind for each particular line and as I just mentioned, from May 24th to June 1st, we have a full channel with Jupiter and Chiron, and that's a 2551. So this might be a time where we're initiated in some way where something shows up in our reality that we really hadn't expected. In the big world stage, we might see some Jupiterian energy that shows us something that we never thought. And that could be somebody who is very Jupiterian or somebody who has that energy of a big bubbly personality. It could be somebody who is Sagittarius or somebody who's a Pisces that we see them in the world stage or something shows up in the world that shocks us in a way that is very surprising but also shifts our reality in a way that we can't really go back to the old ways because something brand new has shown up in, in how we look at the world all around us. On June 2nd, Jupiter moves into the gate 17 and it closes out the second quarter of the year. Now, Jupiter is not as happy within this energy as it is in Pisces. Now the key word for the gate 17 is it is the concept that those who wish to rule must know how to serve and that really talks about this idea that in order for people to be a good leader then they need to know how to serve people as much as they are serving themselves and there is a balance that is required. This is also the gate of opinions or what we believe as our own hypotheses that we want to put out into the world, something that we think is the truth, but it really has to be proven to be true before it can actually be adopted by the collective. Not all ideas or opinions are well formed or something that has been given enough time to marinate, you could say, so that you have sort of the best version of this opinion. And when you have the right people that sort of connect with you and hear what you have to say, there's potential for you to experiment with this opinion and see if it's true or not. A lot of times opinions can be just these half cocked ideas that people have and they say they have no basis for it. They just want to tell you exactly what they think. And there's nothing other than a bunch of cotton candy, you could say, that is has no substance that just dissolves as soon as there's anything that opposes it. This is also an awareness gate. So we know that there is some level of potential me mental anxiety with this energy. And the anxiety is that you do have an opinion that is important. And again, this it's always this idea that people aren't going to listen to you and you know that it's important for them to hear what you have to say. 
the key with this energy is always to know that it is a timing thing. Divine timing will show you that the right people will ask you what you have to say. And at that time, that will be the perfect time for you to tell people what you think and what your opinion is. Because if you give your opinion and you haven't been invited or acknowledged to give it, most people will just shut you down and they're not, they're not interested in what you have to say. With Jupiter there, this could be a lot of this concept of a lot of people coming up with these big expansive opinions about what they think is going on and really not having the basis behind it other than a lot of hot air, you could say. So there's two ways that this can play out with Jupiter there. One is that you have somebody who has kind of appealing opinions, somebody who has something that seems like it's okay, seems like it's the right thing and you follow what they say. But what might happen is that they don't actually have what you think they have. And so this is a time to be really discerning about what people are saying, what opinion they have. Are there holes in their opinion? Does it make sense to you? When you really look at somebody's opinion, is it going to hold up or is it going to just fall apart? The other way of this showing up is just having one way of looking at the world and thinking that only this particular type of energy works best. So if you're in, for instance, an astrologer, then only astrology works in the world. Or if you're somebody who does tarot cards, only tarot cards work in the world and not being able to see that there might be some truth in all different divinations, or there might be some truth in different ways of doing things and different ways of looking at things, because this is logical energy. And we're really talking about potential patterns for the future. So this is where we're kind of potentially being narrow-minded and not really wanting to see anything else that works in the world. So those are two energies to look out for when Jupiter transits the gate 17. And the other thing is, is that this can be potentially more impactful for somebody who has the gate 62, the gate 17, or the full channel, the 1762. Now we come to quarter three and we're moving again. The nodal shift is going to happen on July 31st, 2022. Now, the one thing you'll notice with all these nodal shifts is that so far they've all been individual energy. So what we can say for 2022 is a big chunk of it is the background frequency is individual energy, which is really mutative, creative, and finding your own path in the world. So the nodes change into the gate two and also the gate one. So we're going to begin with the gate one as the south node for the first one and a half months and then move into the gate two as the north node. And this is the most yin and yang energy that we have in the body graph. The most yang is the gate one, which is primal creative energy. And the gate two is the most yin. And this is again, the mo magnetic monopole. We've already seen it happen where we had Uranus dip into this energy and Uranus is connecting with this energy as well because Uranus is staying around in the gate two for a while. So Uranus is potentially activating the energy of the nodes and kind of giving it more of a flavor to the collective because of that as well as this mutative and innovative and sort of unusual way of directing or finding our direction in life. This is an activation of the magnetic monopole. And especially if you have the gate 14 hanging or the gate two or the full 14 two channel. And as well, if you have the gate eight, the gate one, or also the eight one channel, you might feel the most impact from this background frequency or this transit. So when we talk about these nodes, this is really talking again about our direction in life. And this is about the environment being this primal force of creativity. This is manifesting inspiration without limitation. This is an inspiring environment. So we are in this thrall of creatively being inspired to change things, to mutate things, to bring our own creative spin into the world. And it really does talk about this almost like a renaissance because they always say that when we have a lot of contraction, like we had in 2020 and 2021, we also have this expansion and where we have this creative flow that infuses the collective or infuses the world with this brand new creative and a creative force like 
energy that really does add a lot of flavor to the world all around us. So anybody who's felt like they've been not creatively inspired over the last couple of years can really feel this creative spirit start to flow through them for 2022. And it is also talking about being open when we're having the gate two being transited and having the receptivity to seeing new directions or seeing new paths that you want to explore or to start to move toward. And it is really this opening yourself to having a new vision and also being able to activate that new, new vision and to move toward that new vision for your future. August 14th, we have Uranus moving into the gate 23, and it is once again connecting with the nodal energy that we just had in the last quarter because we had that going with the nodes. And Uranus is going to bring this flavor of being able to take those mutative ideas or the 4323, all the energy that we got for these innovative and far-reaching ideas, and to start to try and figure out some words or ways of expressing it to the collective so that we can start to make some moves toward having some manifestation of this energy actually happen in the world. With Uranus involved, this really is talking to this idea of something internet-based or something web-based or something that is online. It could be something related to the arts of astrology, human design, or those types of practices. The key word with the gate 23 is the awareness and understanding which leads to the acceptance of diversity. So in other words, this is where we're getting the the words to describe our awareness because the awareness that comes comes from the gate 43 because that is an, an Ajna gate. Now this doesn't mean that everything comes together just like that. It just says that we are getting the words to articulate it to get the people that can help us to move forward with this energy on board kind of thing. So again, anything coming from above the neck or above the throat center is something that we need other people to help us with to actually have some manifestation in the real world. Now by August 25th, all of the outer planets are retrograde. So that's why I said as we move forward into the year, we're going to have less kind of new energy and we're going to be re reviewing a lot of the energy. And this is what's happening as of August 25th. We're starting to review the energy that we have already encountered for the beginning or for three quarters of the year that we've already gone through. September 5th, we have Pluto going back into the gate 61, making its final kind of mutation you could say because every gate that Pluto goes through is never the same after it leaves because it has such a long cycle and as I said this is the last hurrah for Pluto in the gate 61 and although it, it can potentially give you that pressure that mental pressure the thing about this energy is it will be in the gate 61 line 6 which is actually exalted and says that we might get inspiration from this energy or inspiring thoughts or inspirational knowing and this ability to work with the energy in a way that it's not as oppressive as it might have felt like in 2021. And of course this will connect with anybody who has the hanging gate 24 the gate 61 or the full channel, the 6124. And from September 10th to October 1st, we have Mercury going retrograde for the third time and it will be going retrograde in the gate 18, 46 and six. And this is energy that is once again moving towards the spleen. But having said that, last year we had, in 2021, we had a lot of splenic energy and a lot of what we call the fear gates being transited. So we had a lot of that energy really kind of amping up this feeling of anxiety and fear. And this year, the nice part is, is that we're not having that long retrograde of those energies or having like, for instance, Mars, going through those energies as we did in 2021. So it does feel as though those fear gates are not going to be as prevalent this year as they were last year. Nonetheless, we will be going over the gate 18 and this is really challenging the patterns, challenging authority. What is not working? What do we need to push against? What do we need to improve to get a better pattern? This is sort of the end of the year. What is not working? What is working? What can we get a better version of in the future? That's what the gate 18 is really talking about. 
We also have, and remember, there's an awareness within this energy. As much as there is an in intuition and there's potential for fear, there is an awareness. So in other words, we will get that awareness if we're actually being really open to it because the splenic awareness comes in a moment and then it goes and you only get one opportunity to listen to that message. The gate 46 is also being transited by Mercury. And this is really talking about the love of our form. So this might be where we're really starting to look at how are we treating our bodies? The love of bo the body is, is what this is. And this is, a, again, a love gate. And it's really talking about our body is a form that we need to have to have an incarnation on earth. And how are we treating it? And are we treating it as it should be treated? And if we're not, what can we do to improve it? Now, this might be a lot of opening up of a lot of different ways that we can treat our body in a way that we are feeling more empowered and we feel better about who we are. And we are also loving the form that we have no matter what it looks like. This can also mean that synchronistic events are happening. We are in the right place at the right time. And we also have the gate six being transited. And this is really talking about diplomacy or this idea of finding resolution. This is also the gate of war or peace. So finding peaceful solutions to things or continuing to try and push your own agenda. It's a choice that people will make. And we might hear about that in the media where there is some kind of diplomacy or lack of diplomacy that we see in the world all around us. This Mercury retrograde might be more impactful for people who carry the gate 18, the gate 46, the gate 6, the gate 58, the gate 29, and also the gate 59. And before we know it, we're in the last quarter of the year and we're finishing up 2022. So the first thing that we have happening in this quarter, because I said all the planets are all kind of going retrograde and going over old territory, but we have Mars going retrograde as well, adding to the whole mix. Mars only goes retrograde every two or so years, or it's not something that happens all the time, but we have Mars going retrograde from October 31st, 2022 to January 12th, 2023. The gates it's going to be going retrograde over will be the gate 12, the gate 45, the gate 35, the gate 16. If you have the gate 12, the gate 45, the gate 35, the gate 16, the gate 22, the gate 21, the gate 36, or also the gate 48, you might feel this more impactfully. Now Mars is going to be going retrograde in Gemini and many of the gates it's going through, it's not necessarily in its best form. So it might be, you could say the fly in the ointment that is a little bit on the more difficult or challenging side. But having said that, knowing what we're going to deal with can really help us through the energy. And a lot of times people can feel Mars retrogrades as something that is not ideal and it doesn't feel the best, but it can clean up or go over some themes that are important for us to go forward in our future. We look at the gate 12 that is one of the gates that mars will be going through the key words with the gate 12 is this withdrawal or retreat and not really wanting to interact unless you feel like you're in the mood and mars doesn't like that mars wants to confront move forward and aggressively go where it wants to go and not really stop so it makes sense that it's not its best self in the gate 12. and in this case it could be this idea of of being a little bit more self-critical or not really loving yourself and thinking that you're doing a good job. This this idea of being unhappy with how you interact in the world, being unhappy in how you are socially being part of the collective type of thing. Also remembering interactions that may not have worked out the way you want it to. And these are kind of energies that Mars could be sort of directing at us and kind of pushing this agenda of, oh, well, why are you going away and retreating? Ultimately, we have to do what feels right for us. And, and truly with any gate energy that is related to individuality, like the gate 12 is, and this really is the most individual energy of socialization. It is this idea that we have to step away and be true to how we feel and if we want to interact or not, and not really feel critical to ourselves if we want to retreat. It is also this point where you don't want to get to the point where you're just retreating away because you've had experiences that were not favorable or things that have hurt you in the past. So this is working through that energy and knowing that every interaction that you go out into the world doesn't necessarily have to be a repeat of something that was less than impressive or less than perfect in your eyes. 
The other perspective is that when we get to the gate 16, there's this idea that we may feel like we are more advanced than we are with the gate of skill. So if we can th think about the gate 16 as part of the full channel, the 1648, which is all about mastery, Mars is wanting to push through and not really take the steps, the slow steps to get where you want to go to repeat over and again, because that's the only way that mastery can happen. Mars wants to jump to the finish line, get frust gets frustrated with having to wait around, having to repeat the same thing and sometimes can say, oh, I'm good enough. It doesn't matter anymore and kind of give up on the skills that you've been working on. This is where we might want to look at where we're going and deciding that maybe we might feel in like in the moment that we are already where we need to be, but maybe give it some time, wait for the retrograde to be over with and to recalibrate after to see if that is actually how we feel or if it was just this spontaneous feeling that you want to get away from the mastery or you're good enough already. The other perspective is this idea that not really recognizing the talent in others because the channel 1648 is also the channel of talent. And this is where you're not looking at other people as having talent. In fact, you're kind of saying, oh, you're no good and you're not very good at this and that type of thing. And just wanting to sort of show your own stuff and not really see other people and their talent as well. So once again, it's it's about seeing those kind of behaviors. And maybe if it's directed at you and that somebody says, oh, you don't have talent or they don't recognize your talent because because especially when you have the full channel or even half the channel, a lot of times you're waiting for people to recognize your talent. And with Mars there is not really a time where people could potentially see you for all the things you can give to the world. So it's a time when if you are trying to be seen for your talent, it might be better to sort of hold off and wait until the retrograde has been over with so that you might have a better opportunity to actually be seen for what you can do in the collective. With Mars transiting over the gate 35 for this retrograde, we're going to have the full 35, 36 channel between Mars and Neptune. And that's going to happen between September 10th to September 22nd, December 6th to December 20th, 2022 and also in February of 2023. And this is a manifesting channel or this energy of wanting to get new experiences and those types of things. And with Mars there, it could make it even more impactful that you want to get or we as a collective, because everybody will be feeling this energy, wanting to get more experiences in life, or what we're doing is manifesting more experiences in our life. And with the gate 35 included, it really does talk about potentially being more selective in the experiences that you decide to take. You're not going to jump potentially into just anything. This kind of gives more of a balance to really have an idea of, I only want to do this. And this will only be the thing I want to do. And the only other perspective of this when this full channel is being activated is this idea that there is this concept of a lot of potential for expectation for things to work a certain way. But with Neptune in the gate 36, it really is very important for us to have this openness to what we receive as opposed to having a very set plan of how it should look for us. And if we do, then we'll probably be more happy and excited about what we actually do get in the long run. The gate 35 with Mars in the gate 35, the gate 35 is called the gate of progress or having a talent for experiences is, is what we could call this. With Mars there, there's this need to just continue to have more, to have this insatiable appetite, to get ahead, to get more experiences, to build up your talent at any cost and not really want to stop. And it is this insatiability of wanting to get more and more and more and kind of pushing your way through to get what you want. Because again, this is Mars energy and Mars can have a very pushy kind of energy that that gets what it wants and isn't, isn't really worried about using force, you could say. The other perspective is the expectation is that you have to have something very specific at the end. And if you don't get that specific thing at the end, you just won't, you won't have the experience. You won't even try it. And that is something that could stop you from having a lot of fun because there's potential that you could actually go out and have fun or just enjoy yourself, but you just don't want to have just fun. You want to have something bigger, more kind of monumental than, than and just this concept of fun. So this is where we might want to moderate the energy to say that, yes, it is nice to get the experiences, but also 
you know, to be able to moderate how much we're getting and not go to the extreme of either end where it's just one experience after another and we can't get enough or the other perspective is just saying I'm not doing anything because unless I get the perfect experience I won't do anything at all so it's just this moderation of the behavior and kind of going somewhere in the middle some level of finding balance within the energy and the gate 45 what might be considered the energy where Mars is really kind of pushing the agenda because we do have this energy of wanting to have this leadership position you could say and it is a tribal energy so in other words you will listen to me because I'm the boss and you have to listen to me and Mars is basically saying that's what you have to do and you don't really have a choice in the in the in the matter so in a lot of ways Mars in the gate 45 is kind of like the anti-leader or the leader that is doing all the things for just themselves. They're not really listening to what people want. They're just doing their own thing. They're wanting what they want. And if they don't get what they want, it's almost like a spoiled child not getting the candy that they want and how they act. So if this is a leadership energy that we're seeing in the collective or in the world, this is this could be showing us all the things that we don't want in a leadership position. This is, again, a very temporary type of thing. And what we might see during this time of Mars retrograde is people acting in a way that is very connected with how Mars is in its detriment. And from seeing how they're acting, knowing exactly who they are, because like you said, if somebody shows you who they are, believe that. Many times we see people acting in a certain way that isn't really in their best form and sometimes that can be just something that just happened and and it's just specifically for that moment but sometimes it is an underlying pattern or an underlining behavior that they hide really well with mars in the gate 45 it really does talk to this idea that we may see some leaders or leadership positions of people where potentially they're showing their true colors and when that happens, they may lose the support that they have so far maintained. And when they're seen for not really being who they say they are, then that could be when we actually start to lose support for this leadership and somebody falls from grace, we could say. And that might happen during Mars retrograde. And as I said, the key with his energies is always to know that this is a transit. And even though things might sort of flare up during this time, we know that it is something that can sometimes just bring things to the surface so that we can actually deal with it. And when we see the truth or the underlying aggression or the things that Mars will push in our face, sometimes we can start to work with it so that we can heal it or get rid of it if we if it's part of our life and we don't no longer want it or need it or we feel like we've done with it or in some way balance the energy so that we feel like we can work with it. And on November 27th, we have the final nodal shift of 2022. And that is when we move into the gates 24 and the gate 44. So we have the north node going in the gate 24 and we have the south node going into the gate 44, which means that we start with the gate 44 and then we move into the gate 24. What's interesting is that we have the gate 24 where Uranus was doing a lot of transiting uh, beginning of the year and also in 2021. So it's kind of a resurgence of the same theme. Pluto moves back into the gate 60. So there will not be a full channel 61, 24 like we had in 2021. So when we begin with the gate 44, this is really talking about sales, the new and improved advertising. And we do know that this is a fear gate. So we've sort of not had to work with the fear gates very much other than when the sun and uh, the earth and Mercury and Venus do their regular transits through the fear gates, but we do have the gate 44 being activated. Now the gate 44 is one of the oldest fears of the, the world you could say, and this is really the fear of the past repeating itself or patterns starting up again. Now this could show something that is something that's showing up in the collective or in the environment that looks like something that we've experienced in the past, something that is sort of resurging or springing up again in some way. Ra Uruhu said that with the gate 44 in a node or sort of as our environment, this is about surrendering to the environment all around us. And when we do, then that is when we are our most successful or things go to plan. 
Another thing that he did connect with this energy of the gate 44 is he did talk about the avian flu. So I'm not sure if we might see that in the world. Hopefully not, but that is something to look at potentially as showing up. The other thing is, like I said, when we look at the gate 24 and also the gate 44 together, we are looking at bringing back something old that has already kind of been in the world, but putting your new spin on it. But it's also this idea that it is in some way a hit in the world, you could say, in that a lot of people want this thing, whatever it is. You could say something like, for instance, a Rubik's Cube, where you want to go back and you wanted to, like back in the day when Rubik's cube, Cubes were a thing, and you just had that puzzle and you would keep playing with that puzzle trying to figure it out. It's that same kind of concept where it's something that you keep going back to that you want to keep doing over and again. And when we have the Gate 44 involved, we also have this idea of, something old, bringing it into sale, making money off it, an environment where we are making money off things that have been in the past and are being, you know, that having the 2022 spin, you could say. So, I mean, the one thing that I've seen a lot of that is, is kind of happening now, especially if we're looking at this idea of uh, the gate 60 being a, a big theme for the whole year and bringing the old with the new, you could say, and kind of working with what you have is a lot of these uh, toys that I have seen, people making toys, wooden toys, and the old fashioned toys that they used to have, but bringing them in with a new sort of 2022 spin or a new spin that we hadn't seen before. So this is if you're trying to sell something in the world or you have some type of business, a business where you are bringing your own particular theme to something that is already around. So some people will say like, for instance, astrology, but you do a specific type of astrology that only you practice, or you do some type of creative art that other people have done, but you're, you're bringing your own specific way of how you do it. So that is something that could be very popular and very lucrative as well. When we look at the patterns of the gate 44, again, we are looking at this idea of the fear of patterns repeating, but we also can see because this is an awareness energy and it comes from the spleen, we could potentially see that there are patterns that are repeating, but maybe we can shift the pattern so it's not exactly the same. So whatever power that we have to actually shift the patterns that we can see, if we can do that to make new patterns, then that can really work with this energy in the best possible way so that we're getting new patterns for our future as much as we are looking at the old patterns or melding of the old and the new, you could say, to make something brand new as well. The gate 24 that we had a lot of Uranus within is it's really bringing back this idea of conceptualizing transformation and renewal and this idea of potentially getting some awareness from all that download or the pressurized energy that we had from Pluto's last transit through the gate 61 to get some level of awareness of all those things that we were being given and we didn't really know how to connect or to get the awareness, but maybe the awareness will start to come and that we're going to get these moments of awareness where we understand what it all means and we get the answers to those questions that have been spinning around for a long time. So it potentially might be a time where we're actually getting some answers to those questions that have been with us for so long and they just never really seem to have any resolution. And if that happens, there's that moment of silence where the questions that have been within us and spinning for so long finally stop moving and we get that moment of just being quiet and some level of peace. And to close out the year, we do go back into Mercury retrograde and that's going to happen from December 29th, 2022, right into January 18th, 2023. And I think the most interesting thing about this Mercury retrograde is that a lot of the energies that Venus is retrograding through this beginning of January in 2022, Mercury will be retrograding over those same energies. So it almost feels like it's closing out that cycle with those energies or revisiting those energies that we're thinking about in January giving us another opportunity to look at those energies and the gates are the 61 the 54 the 38 and also the 58 so this is going to be potentially most impactful for anybody with the gate 61 the gate 54 the gate 38 the gate 58 
the gate 24 and with mercury going retrograde in the gate 61 we will have the full channel the 61 24 for a very short period of time during that retrograde and it also has the potential to impact anybody with the gate 32 the gate 28 and also the gate 18. so once again this is a pressure from the head center and three root pressures so the pressure to get the answers you want the pressure to succeed or to climb the ladder of life, the pressure to find your purpose or to fight for your purpose or fight for the things that matter the most for you and the joy in life or the pressure to find the perfection in the patterns of life to direct your energy into making things better. And that's really what it is, this pressure to make the world a better place. And that is 2022 in a very long nutshell, but I hope it is beneficial to you and that you can tap into this energy and really use the transits to help you to gauge the energy of the world around you and how it you are interacting with the transits and how they make you feel. And the more you understand who you are and become more self-aware with how you interact with the transits of the planets and the whole world in general, the more prepared and resilient you can be to the way the world shifts and change as we go through 2022. And with that said, thank you for being here. If you're still around, thanks for hanging around till the end. And that's all for now. Take care and I'll see you again soon.